My grays are looking particularly gray today. It's like really coming in nicely. Anyway, so today is the 1st of August and I have been trying to sit down to record this video for the past two days and I just haven't really been motivated. So if my heart's not all there, I'm really sorry about that. I promised myself that I would shoot a video every month on my monthly favorites and this month, went by really quickly, so I don't really have that many things here, so I hope you guys enjoy it either way. Like every month, I'm gonna start off with things that you don't have to go out and buy to consume. So I'm gonna start off with an Instagram favorite, Gel Cream. So I met her a couple months ago and I started following her on Instagram and she does little um, product reviews on Instagram. And that's kind of like an untapped market or a market that I haven't tapped quite yet. So she does little short product reviews that are very honest. She takes beautiful photos and then writes little descriptions on the product and kind of does a little review. I gotta say, because it's a photo and a written review, I love how beautiful the photos are. The aesthetic is super clean, but I also love and admire the brevity of her reviews. So it's just straight to the point, very honest, sometimes brutal. So if you're not already following Gel Cream on Instagram, I think that's definitely a great source for product reviews, almost like an instant into the gloss. A YouTube favorite, I gotta say, is Dear Bethany. So I found her through looking up Jessie Cam, because I have a couple of her pants. I love Jessie Cam's style. So I looked her up and found Dear Bethany. So she's a petite girl, and she kind of lets you know that as well. So like things are more catered to people who are on the shorter side. I'm 5'5", five five, so I feel like I can relate to that as well. And her styling is just, Kind of minimal, um, very on point, very classic, very clean, but also girly and fun at the same time. So for someone like me, who I feel like I'm a bit more of a tomboy, I can still relate to her style. And her voice is super soothing. She's not like a very hyper YouTuber, so for me, that's a lot easier to watch. The way she shoots her videos and the way she speaks, you can tell that it's very well thought out. I'm really enjoying her videos, and she makes them pretty consistently as well. I think it's about like once a week. So if you're looking for a new YouTuber to watch, definitely check her out. For music, I found out about this through Spotify, actually. They have this like Discover Weekly thing that I found out about maybe like a year ago. So every Monday, they create a playlist of things that you listen to from the previous week. Um, so I, I think it's just algorithms, you know? So I found out about a song called Don't Talk About Freedom and it's by the gang of Harry Rosely. I think that's how you pronounce it. But it's not a compilation like this, it's called Those Shocking Days. And when I was in Portland a couple months ago, I found this record, so I bought it right away because everywhere else online it was super expensive. And in Portland, I think it was only like 18 bucks. Everywhere else, it's like 40, 60, 80. And it opened a whole new world for me. It's a whole record of just psychedelic music. It's Indonesian, hard, psychedelic, progressive, rock and funk, and it's from the 70s. Great for cleaning, great for doing chores, doing um, expense reports every week. Really good background music, so definitely check it out. It's on Spotify. About a year or maybe two years ago, my cousin Amy told me to watch go and watch Jane the Virgin, which is a show that's on Netflix. And they have three seasons out, and then also, um, Caitlin told me to watch it as well. So I put it on like my queue, but I never watched it because it just seems like such a cheesy show. Although I love cheesy like rom-coms and cheesy shows, I just kind of saw that. I'm like, well, I don't really get it. So um, I put it away for, I think about a year. I had it on my list to watch and I just never watched it. And then when I went to New York earlier last month, I um, downloaded two episodes onto my phone and then while I was waiting for my flight, I watched both episodes, and they're like 45 minutes each, so every episode is pretty long. But I plowed through those two episodes, and since I was still in the airport, I'm always early to everything. Um, I downloaded the rest of the season, and I finished the entire season um, on my three days while I was in New York. My friends would invite me out to go get drinks and go hang out and stuff, and I'm just like, oh, I'm really tired, you know? I'm just gonna go home, and it's like 11 at night. I'll go home and then binge watch Jane the Virgin up until like four in the morning. And you gotta remember, four in the morning in New York is 7 a.m. my time, so that's how much I love the show. And I plowed through all three seasons in like two weeks. So to me, it's that good. I think it's such an amazing show. It's so well written. All the characters are well developed. And just to break it down a little bit, um, it's basically a an American telenovela and it's about a girl who is 23 years old who is saving herself for marriage. So she has a fiance. She goes in to get a pap smear but accidentally gets artificially inseminated, so um, gets pregnant and she's still a virgin. So it's about that, but also a little bit about religion and politics as well. It's a lot about, you know, like Catholic religion and stuff and 
I don't know if you guys know, but I grew up in a very hardcore Catholic family. My dad's like a hardcore Catholic. So those values, like I totally get. I guess for me, it was just very easy to fall in love with that show and fall in love with all the characters because it was so relatable. Jane the Virgin, it's on Netflix, go check it out. I'm gonna talk about a book. This is Indoor Green, Living with Plants, and a bunch of different, um, I guess interviews, like little conversations with a bunch of different people who have plants. And I think the book is just done so well. The interviews are very short and sweet and just really easy to read and follow along with. You can see that the homes have a little bit of wear and tear and um, the people are just real people, you know? They have real homes, a little bit messy, a little bit wabi-sabi. It's not, you know, perfectly minimal or anything like that. And as you know, I love plants and I have like a boatload of plants. Actually, a couple of them aren't doing so well because I went away and I forgot to water some, so. Yeah, I recommended this book. It seems like it's the same book, but this is Green Terrier. Um, and it's about, um, yeah, plant-loving creatives in their homes. This is basically the same book, but this is, for me, it's a bit more approachable because it's not so clean. It's not so um, well manicured. It's like a very honest interior design approach to plants. So if you love plants, check out this book. Um, and if you like a more minimal artsy fartsy home, then check out Green Terrier. Minor history. So I've been carrying around this circle bag that they have um, for quite some time. And usually I'm not a bag person, but every once in a while, especially because in LA it's been so hot, it's like 95 degrees today. Um, it's been so hot, so usually the things that I wear either have pockets. If they don't, then I'll carry around a little bag. During the winter, it's not so much of a problem because I have a bunch of jackets with a boatload of pockets, so it's usually not an issue. But during the summer, when you're wearing dresses or shorts or whatever, you don't really have a ton of pocket space. So I just got this bag and this little purse. It's like a small little clutch. It's so tiny and Oh man, it fits the bare minimum and I really like that. I usually wear this like circle moon purse, but it's a little bit on the bigger side so I tend to overstuff it. I put like my cameras in it and stuff. But this is just the perfect size for my keys, phone, and wallet. So as you can see, my phone fits like perfectly in the front slot. Here, I'll actually show you what I keep in it because it's not that much stuff. So my phone fits perfectly right here. And then I have my little card case. This is the little card wallet from the same company, Minor History. I also have a lipstick in here. This is from Bare Minerals. It's the new ge Generation Nude lipstick, and it's like a really creamy, buttery formula. The color I have is called Panko. It's kind of like a spiced, mauve color. Um, I really like this. I have it on my lips right now. It's a super creamy formula, very moisturizing, especially for right now because I've been really dry and hot lately. I also have it on my cheeks too. I dropped it, so. It's all like bash and stuff, but this is definitely gonna be something that I'll buy backups of. And what else do I have in here? I just have my keys. There's, you know, just one slot right here, a giant pocket, and then another pocket in the back, which I guess you can keep your phone in there if you wanted to. Oh, and I have the iPhone 7 Plus, so it's the bigger phone, so it actually fits in there perfectly. Yeah, if you're looking for a new purse that's like relatively small, I definitely recommend this. They have a green color that I really love too, so I might get that next. I'm gonna move on to some makeup and skincare stuff. So I've been using this Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. It's exactly the description. It's very lightweight. Um, I used this in a first impressions video and just like fell completely in love with it because it's such a lightweight formula. It doesn't get really greasy on me or anything like that. It's just a sheer coverage. The shade I have is Bamboo 5.5. Um, it's a very sheer wash though, so I feel like even if you kind of get a color that's too dark or a color that's too light, it'll still blend in really well. I use a brush with this, but you can absolutely use your fingers. I really like this because it's just like a tinted moisturizer and it has SPF 30. And then also from Bare Minerals, I'm using the Bare Pro in the color Warm Light 07. Just down my T-zone, touch-ups throughout the day. Sometimes if I'm not wearing a foundation, I'll just put a little dusting of this on top. But I gotta say, Glossier just launched their Wouter, which is basically like a setting powder. And um, the color I have is light medium. And I've only had this for a few days. And it's super sheer, so it's kind of like if skin tint were a setting powder, it would be this. I think they only have three shades though, so that kind of sucks. It's a great setting powder. I think the packaging is really smart. I've been using it for the past few days. And I really enjoy it so far, but I know it's not something that I've been enjoying all month, so I don't really want to get into detail about it. But the mesh is really nice, so it stays really clean. The packaging is cute. I don't really think this comic thing is very on brand, but I don't know, it's pretty fun. And then it comes with this brush that has this little mesh bag right here. 
or it's like a plastic bag with like a mesh inside, but you don't really feel it. And then a cool little um, synthetic hair brush. Since getting this, I've been reaching for this more, but before getting this, I've been using this a ton. So really weigh your options. Ooh, so a new brand that I just discovered, they've been around for a while, but I just started using their products. Make, Make is such an amazing, cool indie brand, and a lot of their stuff are vegan too, so um, yeah, so a lot of people can use it. And this is their universal stick, and it just looks like a purpley um, stick, and the color is cedar. So what you do is you apply it to your cheeks, your eyelids, your lips, and then once you blend it out, it changes colors, and it turns into this like bricky, cedar color. I was so impressed by it when I first tried it, so I've been reaching for this a ton. It's kind of like a cream to satin formula, so it really stays on there and it looks beautiful and I think it looks nice on just about everyone. Yeah, I love this and it's great for travel too. I've been bringing it with me everywhere I go because it covers three things all in one. And then also this eyeshadow, this is from Make as well and this is called Strawberry Hill and this is a matte eyeshadow. It looks like a mosaic tile. I just think it's so gorgeous and it's a combination of a bunch of different colors as you can see but there's like a coral tone and a matte brown tone in it. So it looks a little bit intimidating in the pan but once you blend it out it's this beautiful warm tone brown so it's what I have on my eyelids right now. And the cool thing is that if you use a pencil brush or like a smaller brush you can concentrate it on the individual colors. So you can get like a matte brown or like a matte coral if you want to. But what I do is I just grab a big fluffy brush and brush it all over my eyelids. And yeah, I just think it's so beautiful and I love the finish and the color. So Charlotte Gainsbourg, I love Charlotte Gainsbourg. She's a musician and an actress and she did a collaboration with NARS and I tried well, I went to Sephora and I tried out everything from that line and I kind of had to force myself to love something. And that's not a good sign. If you have to force yourself to love something, it probably means it's not that great, right? So eventually I bought this. So it's the NARS Charlotte Gainsbourg Lip Tint and it's the color Promise. So there's only two colors that they came out with. There's one that's like a more blushy color and then this one which is like a more berry stain. Oddly enough, I've been reaching for this a ton. So it gives you a little bit of like a berry tint. I have darker pigmented lips, so it stands out on me. Someone with a fair complexion, it'll really pop and look amazing. And I love that it's like a purple, like bluish undertone, so it makes your teeth look whiter. Yeah, I've been loving this. And it keeps your lips very moisturized as well. The formula is great. It's very sheer. And the packaging is beautiful too. The grip right here is like a army green, like a dark, army green grayish color. I'm just such a sucker. Like I feel like if they were to come out with this and not have Charlotte Gainsbourg's name on it, I probably wouldn't purchase it. But I'm so glad that I did buy it because I've actually been reaching for it a ton. And then on days where I don't want to put on a lip color on top, I've been using this because it smells so, so good. So usually things that smell really good, I always reach for. This is from Clarins and it's the Instant Light Lip Comfort Oil. I think I found out about this through Estee. I got this because I don't normally like lip glosses. I tend to reach for oils just because I need a more moisturizing effect. This is a little bit gloopier, so it's more on the gloss side, but it really hydrates my lips. It doesn't really give me a tint or anything like that because my lips are already so pigmented, but it's very comfortable and it smells amazing. So that's why I reach for it so much. Yeah, my mouth waters every time I smell this. It just smells like candy. It smells like a Jolly Rancher. I'm gonna finish this off by talking about hair. I never talk about hair before just because I'm not really stoked on my hair. I have a lot of grays and I know that's not like a really attractive thing or anything like that. I just got a haircut. What do they call it? They call it break up hair, right? When you really change up your hair. I cut three inches off of it. It still looks very much the same. The only thing is that I got a little bit of layers, so it's been a lot greasier. So I've been trying to keep the roots and my bangs kind of like dry and then also put oils on my ends because it's really hot and dry out. So my ends get really crispy, so I found out about this brand and they're like a California cool brand. This is called Playa or Playa. The packaging is just so beautiful, but they have an endless summer spray. So right when I get out of the shower, I'll spray this all over my hair. Whenever it comes to like a salt spray or like a summer spray, I always kind of feel weary because for the most part, most sprays will dry out my hair and I don't need that because my hair is really long. So I just want it for the texture really. So I've been using the Ritual hair oil on the ends and it smells so good. It's such a lightweight oil. So most oils that I use for my hair are kind of heavy and more on the, like the syrupy side. This is a bit more like water. Like as you can see, it looks really watery. If I'm using it on wet hair, then I'll use like a whole pipette. And it gives me a really nice shine to my hair. It smells so good too. And then for dry shampoo, because my bangs get really oily. So this is also from Playa and it's the pure dry shampoo and it smells 
so, so good. It's a rose petal powder star anise. It just smells like really clean, very lightweight. It's not like a cologne for your hair or anything like that. Most dry shampoos are just like too much for me. So after I spray it on, I can smell it. And then I kind of like associate that scent with dirty hair. So it just kind of grosses me out over time. But this, I mean, it's such a subtle scent that it hasn't really gotten to me. And the most important part for me is that this is like an invisible spray. So once I spray it on, it's like a little bit white, but then it'll absorb quickly and then disappear and I can be out of the house in like three minutes. Shampoos. So I think like seven or eight years ago, I was using a lot of like Lush shampoo bars. I love them because they're just so travel friendly and they last a really long time and they smell really good. I use this one called Scenic, which is like salt, seaweed, and it gives you kind of beachy hair. Um, but for some reason, after I finished those, I stopped buying them. I guess I just wanted to try other things. And then when I started dating Ian like six years ago, he uses Head & Shoulders two-in-one. So I started using that and I've been on that bandwagon for like six years now. So. I still have that in my shower. It works really well as like a clarifying shampoo. I was at Lush and Serene talked about how much she loves the big shampoo and it's mostly sea salt. Serene just raved about it and her hair texture is the complete opposite of mine. Her hair is like super fine and straight. Mine's like really wiry and thick. So I didn't think that I would like it, but she's like, you have to try it. You just have to try it because it gives you like a really nice lift at your roots. So it makes your hair like just look really nice and bouncy and defined. Um, and since I'm putting like salt sprays and stuff in my hair, I was just like, okay, well, I guess I'll give it a try. I just fell completely in love with it. It smells so good. It smells like laundry detergent in a sense, but I love the smell of laundry detergent, so I don't mind. It washes out super clean. You would think that it would leave like chunks of salt in your hair, but it doesn't. And I always thought that sea salt would dry out my hair completely, but I've gone days where I'll shampoo my hair and then not put anything else in my hair, and it still has really nice body volume and shine. So if you're looking for a new shampoo to try out, that's it's like not your typical squeeze bottle shampoo. Definitely try this out. Those are my favorites for the month of July. I have a lot of videos on my hard drive right now. So um, there's a lot more videos to come. I hope you guys are having a good day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.